I am so unbelievably excited to be bringing you this video where I will be introducing Ryan, who is a pro Etsy seller, because I wanted to make a video for you all about Etsy, and I don't know enough about Etsy, so I thought I would do a collaboration with someone and interview them about all the things that you want to know about selling print on demand through Etsy. So watch this entire interview all the way through, and I really, really hope you enjoy it. Leave a comment down below, tell me what you think, and also let me know if you want me to do more interviews with other people. Firstly, thank you so much for for coming on this call with me. I know my audience are desperate to hear all this Etsy information. So Happy to be here. brilliant. So before we before we dive in, firstly introduce yourself, tell us who you are, that kind of thing. Yes, I am Ryan Hoag. Uh, I think we come from similar backgrounds as far as e-commerce goes. I know that we both sell on uh, Amazon FBA. Yeah. Although the the print on demand videos have been in high demand lately, yeah. so I think we're planning on talking about some print on demand stuff today. But um, yeah, I, I have a background as a web developer. A lot of spend a lot of time on computers. Natural segue was into e commerce because while I loved being a web developer, I also had ambitions of not having to show up to work every day. I guess in in right, short, course. and uh, this has allowed me to actually make that dream a reality. I quit my nine to five job in uh, February of this year. So I had about a one month head start on everybody that <laughs> got to either work from home or unfortunately got laid yeah. off due to the, sur the cerveza sickness. I hear that. I hear that. That's pretty cool. Okay. Yeah. I have, I have, I have questions, which most YouTubers, and this is why I want to do an interview with you. Most YouTubers will hang up and be like, I'm not, this is not part of it. Mm -hmm. Tell me what is your main source of income? Right. And I publish income reports on the first or second day of each month. So you can actually follow along and you can check me on this. It's uh, so cool, guys. It's it, it genuinely does this. And I, I mean, this is what got me into this interview because I was like, this is this is a bit too much information. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, yeah, my parents, they see them and they're like, you shouldn't put this out there. And I'm like, no, no, it's OK. Like, I actually pay taxes and whatnot. Uh, I don't know how taxes are over in the UK, but man, I pay too much yeah. here. It sucks. Yeah. <laughs> a lot you, you need a good account and that's what i'll say amazon fba has been my leading source of uh passive income profits i always do my best to distinguish revenue from profit in my monthly income reports amazon fba was actually how i started my passive income journey so in my mind it's also it makes a little bit of sense that that would be my leading um source yeah of course and everything else that i that I talk about on my channel that I speak to from experience, they're all pretty complimentary. You know, a lot of them intersect at Amazon, even the print on demand stuff. Like I started on Amazon, realized I could make money off of Amazon. And that's how a lot of it got started. But FBA is usually my lead. Although I had one month in um, 2018 where print on demand sales, I don't know if it was my only month where it was higher. Actually, no, it definitely wasn't. Do you remember when FBA fourth quarter uh, inventory fees were like huge? <laughs> Yeah, there was that. So, uh, but print on demand, I had a month in August, 2018, where I had like $20,000 profit off of a, mainly a tre one trending design. Oh, wow. That was oh, crazy. Wow. So crazy. Cool. That's so cool. So, I mean, like, you, so of all the print on demand platforms, because obviously this is where we're, we're segueing into print on demand, mm -hmm. as much as I would love to talk about Amazon FBA, I don't right. think people want to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> Separate video. Um, yeah, how can you do? Um, but no, as, as like, of all the print on demand websites, do you have a favorite? Yeah, you know what? <laughs> Amazon Merch can't can't not be my favorite. I've sold a quarter million dollars on there to date wow. as in revenue, as in revenue, not pro not profit, but um, you know, it's just the ease they Amazon Merch and Redbubble both came up in my mind like they both are kind of on a similar trajectory where the way I describe it is like Amazon Merch as you know is like prime eligible print on demand products on yeah. the number one e-commerce marketplace in the world. And Redbubble also, I'm always thinking like, what can they do for me with with regards to the platforms we're selling on? And Redbubble doesn't get nearly the traffic, but at the same time, they rank well on Google, you know? Yeah. And, and between shopping ads, Google shopping and whatnot. And it's just so much easier to upload to Merch and Redbubble than it used to be. With yeah, the I mean, new the upload automation. Is There's automation that does it now, isn't there? Well, even without the automation, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you can kind of like upload one design and it just puts it on all the products. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you do want to change them all. And, and I was them. on both platforms prior to that. So when I always think about how much time I used to spend with the manual uploads before then they changed the process. And then now I've got automation to yeah. do it for me. But 
So, that, I mean, I like those. Also, Printful Etsy is great. I know we were going to talk a little bit about that. Yeah. But, you know, maybe like preview. Um, I've had some some problems with uh, Etsy's. Well, no, I mean, that's the thing. I wanna, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we were just like taught you telling me earlier about your problems with Etsy. And that's another thing. I, I That's what I like about these kind of videos is I don't just I don't just want to tell everyone how amazing Etsy was for you. I also want you to tell them how like bad it was at certain points. And, you know, your honest opinion, because at the end of the day, if, if you if you think Amazon's better than Etsy, then I would say to everyone, head over to Amazon. Um, For sure. In my mind, I think that spread yourself over as many websites. If you've got time to be on Redbubble, be on Teespring, be on Amazon, be on Etsy. Um, mm -hmm. There's no reason why not to because you can't you can use your same design on all these platforms. That's absolutely fine. They're your designs. In, so that, in my that, mind, it makes sense, like you said. Right, exactly. You're going to get more sales if you're on more websites for sure. So so let's so let's move on then with etsy then so what's your initial if i say to you print on demand etsy what would be your initial thoughts with with that because i i don't know anything about print on demand with etsy like i'm my, a blank slate here for sure and it's it's a tremendous opportunity you know just this morning the first thing i did because we're, we're in my time we're recording this kind of early <laughs> the first thing i had to do today because i knew i wanted to get a little exercise in then we record this but I had to jump on a call with somebody who was starting out their print on demand journey from like all they were selling was posters, right? So they're not wow. starting from scratch, okay. but, uh, and like you just mentioned, we want to be in as many places as possible to give ourselves the best chance of making as much money. And I said, look, prioritize Amazon merch. You, he just got in. So he gets one upload a day. And I was like, after that, just go set up Etsy and Printful or you know, he's selling posters. So Etsy Printful, because right now Printful has got a lot of delays with production, but I still believe in them as the best production partner and posters are still working just fine right now. And okay. I said, get on Etsy because that's it's really a low barrier of entry in that it's free. It's other than the fact that for some reason they have an automated suspension of a lot of accounts that you can get your account back after a couple of days, but I, it's relatively easy to get up there and get selling and get visibility and get sales. Like their CEO, I reported on a video maybe three weeks ago where their CEO was on um, CNBC, you know, talking about mainly like it's slanted for stocks yeah. that is publicly traded, but he was giving all these sales figures from the month of April and a little bit of May and just talked about the explosion of certain categories on Etsy. And I mean, it was mainly like print on demand. He didn't say print on demand because I don't think most people would understand it, but like they're definitely a huge leader. And um, Etsy also just a quick caveat. They were the only marketplace that was of the big marketplaces where you could sell masks without getting yeah. trouble. So that was like where people were going to buy them and that's where people were going to sell them. And, and that's what really blew them up. I've, I've even I, I've seen I've seen that all over the place. Masks with Etsy, literally all you over. Could the have place. Made, you could have made if you were early and you just sat there all day. Mask Etsy, mask Etsy, mask. <laughs> if you just did that nonstop in April or even leading up in March, because Printful had masks available pretty early. I mean, the sky's the limit on how much money you could have made. Like in hindsight, hindsight's a wonderful thing. As a, as it was a, on my radar, but you know preview I, I i don't sell on etsy anymore but okay um, was very I mean, successful on you, it when i was there when you did sell on etsy what was your biggest product what did you sell the most yeah you know what it was two types of products and i'm, I'm public about this uh t-shirts okay and and just real quick relating it back to amazon like i'll sell t-shirts on amazon through amazon merch because they're prime eligible yeah but then i would also sell through seller central for the fba sellers you know what we're talking about and i would sell hats you know like like this right. but not branded but um just because like i didn't want to compete with merch prime products that were fbm you know through seller central and with etsy you know completely separate marketplace all i did was i took my amazon merch designs that were already done and just spent a minute uploading it to etsy and get a whole get all this exposure to it's not like there isn't some overlap between etsy and amazon customers but people tend to go to one place to shop. Like if they want to buy something, they either go to Etsy or go to Amazon and then they're buying something from those search results. So I try yeah, to- Yeah, I mean, Etsy has a very unique, in my mind, have a very unique customer that people that like those kind of homemade kind of things, whereas Amazon is a lot more official. It's and true, it's true. And one thing that you'll notice selling on Etsy too, as you gain success is 
they're very quick to reach out to you. Like it's informal, like on Amazon, that buyer seller messaging thing is it's almost like walking on tax. You have to be very uh, <laughs> positive and give them yeah. what they want so that they give you a, or don't give you bad reviews and stuff. And on Etsy, it's like, they'll just send a message and like, say, Hey, I like the shirt or Hey, I hate the shirt. You know, like I'll be right. selling like a pro Trump shirt and an anti Trump shirt and on the same shop and <laughs> hit haters on both sides. It's like, that's brilliant. <laughs> Wait, so you would say t-shirts and probably hats would be your biggest thing. And hats is the answer. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Those are good too. So just, just to address, so you said you don't, you're not selling on Etsy anymore. Is there a specific reason for that? Like you found something better? Yeah, unfortunately, like Etsy closed my account. Uh, I've done two videos on my channel that got a lot of traction, my YouTube channel. Uh, in summary, Etsy, the way that they police their, their marketplace is that they don't police it. <laughs> so the only way you get in trouble is if somebody decides to report your listings, which opens the door to a couple things. Like one person, if they know how to like cycle their IP address, can pretty much get you taken down. I don't think one person did that to me. It was a combination of a few things. Right. One of them was, and this is something everybody should learn from, honestly, because I learned the hard way. Don't make the same mistake, is that on different platforms, almost every print on demand platform lets you add back end tags, tags that don't show up on your title or description. So customers aren't seeing them, but you get indexed on those tags. Right. On Etsy, <laughs> if you put trademarked words in your tags and someone reports the listing, even if the listing doesn't say or infringe at all, you're still going to get like a strike against your account. So, I mean, oh I was getting a little too clever on Etsy with some of my tags that again, I promise you we're not infringing. And then one, one story I have to tell, cause I always tell it the best, the best strike I got against my account. This shirt was not trademarked in any way, shape or form the design, the keywords, nothing. Somebody simply reported it and said verbatim. I still have this written down. I have a little list of the, the ways I got the strikes in case I ever want to rant about them because I can't let it go. But the guy just said, my friend made this design and uploaded it to represent.com two weeks ago. That's all it said. No proof, nothing. No citation of a of a trademark record or no proof. Are you serious? And I just got another strike. Yep. So it's it can sometimes be that simple. So like I mean, people can just go and say this was a copy, this was copyrighted off my design, and they wouldn't yeah. even ask questions. No proof, yep. Yeah. That's scary. Cause I mean, I know, I know Amazon do a lot of Amazon do a lot of research into it. It's a serious like thing when you do a copyright strike. Um oh, that's just yeah. annoying though. It is what it is, man. If we did like a separate video of like the couple downsides of print on demand, it's that's definitely one of them. Is that all mm. these platforms are kind of like you police it yourself or there's some algorithm that makes mistakes. Right, of course. I mean, and that's another reason not to put all your eggs in one basket with one platform. Spread yourself so that if one platform goes down, you have another one because you don't want to give up your entire income source just because, yeah, yeah. you know, some, you know, person says you copyrighted them and made it up. So yeah. that's super annoying. Okay, fine. Well, look, <laughs> let's say you still want to go on Etsy, even though you've been warned. I mean, look, Etsy can still work for some people in my mind if you really, really want to do it. I wouldn't personally say you should focus on Etsy. I say you should focus on multiple, but if you are just for some reason focusing on Etsy, what would you say? Like if you're talking to someone who literally just wants to focus on Etsy and they ask for like three pieces of advice to, you know, get more sales or, I mean, you made a serious amount of money on Etsy. So like, I mean, how, like, what, what would you tell them to go and do? Obviously yeah. all in the, you know, the law. Yeah, let me plug too. I have a video that I put together Yes, gonna, go and watch this. It'll be, the, bottom it'll be in the description. It'll be in the description, guys. Go and watch this video. It's a brilliant video, 100%. Yeah. Just on my YouTube channel, so it's completely free. And uh, when I put this together, it's like 45 minutes long, but I was like, this video is going to get a million views. And I think it's currently at 9,000. So let's at least bump that up to like 10,000. <laughs> uh, it's a huge just knowledge transfer of from me, like learning the ropes about Etsy over the course of, I think, two and a half years. I think I was on Etsy. Uh, and then just giving it to you all in all at once of all the best practices, because it's really just hitting the fast forward button. Like at the end of the day, these are all things that in my mind, like it's like Etsy saying, Hey, we'll make you successful. Just kind of play ball, you know, do these right. things, like make a good thumbnail, use keywords correctly. Don't make the mistake of putting trademarked words in your, in your tags, <laughs> like run a sale, you know, simple things like set up your shop, 
add the production mm. partner correctly. Like I'm listing off things. A lot of them are just one-time things. Once they're done, you move on. You never have to revisit them. So um, yeah, okay. the video that I have is is definitely like a, it's a how-to with screenshots and everything you need to, to really crush it on Etsy. Well, I mean, in my mind, I would just tell everyone who's watching now, as soon as this video is over, go and check out that video. And I mean, it's, it's, it's got everything you need. So I'm going to end pretty much with one last question. Um, and that would be in terms of, so I know how to market a lot of platforms. So in terms of Etsy marketing, did you run ads or did you literally just do all organic the entire time? Yeah, so I didn't run ads off of Etsy. I mean, I could probably talk about this topic for another 20 minutes. So I'll try to keep it brief. Like when I had my big month in 2018, $20,000 profit, I was running ads like everywhere, just thinking like, not not just at, on Etsy ads, but like off of Etsy ads to Etsy and just trying right. everything. Cause I was like, I know this is a winner. So if I can find success here, then I know I can probably do it elsewhere. And you know, that's one area of expertise that you have that I'm not going to pretend to have with as far as running off of the site ads and bringing people to the site. Um, right. I did advertise on Etsy the same way that like, I always talk about advertising on Amazon or advertising on eBay. Oh, so they have their own advertising platform. You can actually advertise on their website. Yeah. But a quick caveat, this is why I was going to say I could talk about it for so long is that they changed it in, um, it was either October or whatever the month before October is September, uh, 2019, where they did a whole overhaul. They used to call it Etsy promoted listings. Yeah. And then they switched it to Etsy, uh, Etsy ads. And when wow. they did that, they screwed over every seller overnight without even telling you, like they told no you, coming, but they didn't say like, I don't know, maybe they did, but they should have at least sent people an email. Hey, we're live because what I did was we could control our bids. So I would just bid like, you know, naturally it's like suggested bid 75 cents. I'm like, okay, I'm coming in under 10 cents. Let's see what happens. And right. it was working. So I just advertised all of my listings. They made it easy to do like an on off switch, just select all. Cause I had over a thousand t-shirts and hats. Wow. I just loaded them all with low ball bids and it was working brilliantly. And then overnight. And I, so I would set my daily budget like really high, like 60, 70, 80 bucks a day. Cause if I spent it, that was good. Right. Uh, and then overnight they, they changed it and you lost the control of your bids, but your daily budget stayed the same. So then all of a sudden your cost per clicks are like 50, 60, 70 cents. Oh and God. they were just spending the budget every single day. And uh, it even got worse from there. I mean, in summary, they also automatically opt you in now to um, what they call offsite ads, where then you're going to have to, I mean, technically it's like if you sell $10,000 in a year, you're auto opted in, but like, that's a low bar, you know? Yeah. And, I mean, you wouldn't even recommend doing Etsy ads at this point then, cause it's a bit expensive. Right. Right. Yeah. Any, any of my content that I put out there, my, my official stance is like, stay away unless you really know what you're doing and you have a lot of time and attention to dedicate to making sure you stay profitable. Or you're just, if you're selling a very expensive item and then, I mean, your profit margin's there, but if you're selling a $20 t-shirt, yeah, sure. you, you don't have profit margin there to, to, you know, spend a dollar on ads. Um, yeah. But I mean, you reckon just the organic search of Etsy is big enough for someone to actually get many sales or is it just like, yeah, that's the thing. Um, when I, I mentioned, like I did a video just talking about their CEO and he came on and like their year over year, they always kind of make some data available. They're growing so fast. And like the last time I just randomly looked at their stock price, like it's reflected that they're at all time highs. It's even though they don't treat their sellers very well, like they're, they're getting a, growing customer base and it, for sure, like you can make organic sales. Like I was mentioning earlier, like kind of alluding to, you got to play ball. So the way that they uh, show you your listings and search results, it's not like Amazon where the listing reviews get shown, they show your shop reviews. So right. you have to keep customers happy because one bad review on one product out of a thousand gets reflected across the board. Yeah. Right. So oh, wow. In my mind, it's like win the battle in search results, you know, search, find, buy, like show up in the results. There's things you can do. Like you can renew your listing early. Normally it's quarterly renewals. Right. Every time your listing renews, it boosts where it ranks. It's, it's weird that they do that, but okay. every time it renews, they make money. So it makes sense. Um, also, every time it sells, it makes money. So like, right. that's why you might see back-to-back -back sales of a product because it got renewed. Now it's boosted. 
Or if you just list a product, you might see a sale in like 10 minutes. I've had that happen a, hand, a handful of times because it's just been renewed. It's it's ranked high. Um, other okay. quick, like, small tips real quick is like you can run sales on Etsy. And if you run a sale, it stands out in the search. It's like running a coupon on Amazon. If it's in the search oh, results, wow. you pop. And if other people don't run sales, you've got an edge over them. So little things like that, you know, take advantage. Okay. I mean, I'm assuming a lot of this is in the video below anyway. Oh, in there. Yep. Okay, so what I'll say is then, rather than berate you with more questions, I got 30 comments of everyone asking a whole bunch of stuff. To everyone who left comments and didn't get your question answered, click the link. It'll be the first link in the description, and you can watch his entire, how long you say it was, 40-ish minutes? About 45 minutes, yeah. Yeah, it'll be a good 45 minutes. You can watch everything you need to watch about about Etsy, hopefully all your questions are answered. And if they're not answered, you just leave him a comment because he's going to respond to you in that. And yep. uh, <laughs> it's that easy. So um, look, thank you so much. Definitely an insight. Really, really cool. Just uh, happy, happy to do it, man. And also I just, one thing popped in my mind because I just had this discussion earlier today with uh, with that student. Um, he asked like what it costs to get started on Printful and Etsy. And it's free, yeah. Printful's free, Etsy's free. You pay 20 cents per listing on Etsy. So Costs are extremely minimal, and right. when you make a sale, you you've locked in your profits. So there's really no reason not to be there. And it's like it's all automated. When you get a sale, Printful will ship it. They'll do all of that kind of stuff. It's like completely automated yep. for you. Yep. It's, it's exactly. kind of like acting like Shopify in a way, except Shopify costs a fortune. <laughs> yep, it, but it's not like Etsy doesn't take their percentage, you know, because we're capitalizing on their brand and their their trust. You know. So what percent? Um, so if you sell the T-shirt for like twenty dollars and Printful took ten. Um, Etsy's got the 20 cents, but like, is there a certain percent that they take from the end sale? Yeah. Etsy's good about masking this too. Um, on average, in my experience, it was a right around 11% what would go to Etsy. Wow. So the nice thing is like, I would, a quick rundown of a profit might be like sell a t-shirt 1999 was my average price. And I charge shipping. I know they say to offer free shipping, but I was like, nah, people can pay shipping. I don't care. <laughs> like I tested both and I didn't see a huge gain. So Fair. 1999, I thought that was a good number. Um, the base cost for Printful, because I was selling the Gildan 64,000 shirt, which is unisex. People love it. The only thing is there's not a wide very, a wide variety of colors available, but 7.95. So Etsy takes 11%, Printful takes 7.95. And then I was also making profit off of the uh, the shipping as well. Although Printful's changed their shipping a bit. So it's I wouldn't high. project. I wouldn't project to make money off shipping anymore, but like when I was doing it, man, I was doing it good. <laughs> like I was charging flat rate shipping on Etsy and almost always making at least another dollar. So, Oh, wow. You're probably crushing it. That's oh, amazing. I had a video on it where I outlined everything, but it's like probably a year and a half old at this point. So I don't know. It's buried on my channel. Well, I'd say, look, when you go and watch this video, just watch, watch all of them because they, they sound, sound amazing. amazing. And watch the income reports because the income reports are very very cool but anyway i want to say that's it for this interview interview thank you so much ryan for your insight into etsy it's Thanks, Jimmy. it's been good it's been really good and uh and yeah hopefully we'll uh have another interview at some point and about amazon fba because yes sir into that. <laughs> yep sounds good to me how insane was that interview there's so much knowledge that was Oh my goodness me, so much unbelievable knowledge. And I can't recommend enough for you guys to go click the link, watch his full 45 minute Etsy training because a lot of your questions unfortunately weren't answered because we just didn't have time. I didn't want the interview to go on for so long. So hit that link in the description, go and check out his full Etsy video and subscribe to his channel as well because he brings out some ridiculously cool content about print on demand, also about Amazon FBA. It's kind of funny how we're in the same you know, niche with everything. But look, I hope you enjoyed that interview. Let me know in the comments down below if you enjoy this interview, if you want me to do more interviews, not necessarily just with Ryan, but with, with other people as well. I will happily do that for you guys. So let me know in the comments down below. And as usual, I make videos Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday. And I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.